Bringing the 90s back to the forefront, the Titan roll delivers extremely fast movement, high damaging weapons, and immense health in a package that's not quite as easy to use as you might initially think. Let's take a look at how best to play it, and how to be as effective as possible with it. Let's get started. If you're playing Titan, then you're probably all about that hammerhead rocket launcher. Holding 6 rockets at a time, this weapon's damage output is fantastic, and it offers some of the most control of just about any rocket launcher I've ever seen, thanks to the Titan's innate ability to detonate those rockets midair whenever they choose. To do this yourself, simply press the alternate fire button while you have a rocket airborne. On a direct hit, you're going to deal 225 damage, and on a point-blank manual detonation by using that alternate fire, your damage drops to 175. The lowest damage number that I've ever seen when hitting somebody with this launcher in real games clocks in at 9 damage, but honestly, I'm very regularly dealing well over 100 damage to targets per rocket. There have been plenty of occasions where I've been able to two-shot enforcer players by getting that one direct hit on them, which is absolutely nuts. The biggest thing to learn with Titan's rocket launcher is how to predict your enemy's movement, lead them appropriately with the rockets, and then detonate them at the correct distance. I can't tell you how many times I've seen opposing Titan players detonating rockets right in front of my face and dealing no damage because they're too impatient with that function of their launcher. Give it a little time and practice though, and once you get your depth perception down with this weapon, you can snipe people from surprising distances with this weapon without too much difficulty. Also of note is that your manual detonation on your rockets has a minimum distance. It's essentially just outside of the splash range of your rockets, so it shouldn't be possible to manually detonate a rocket and deal damage to yourself that way. You'd have to shoot the ground or some other object to deal self-damage. This creates a dead zone for your rocket launcher and is oftentimes a huge problem when fighting against classes that get directly in your face like assassins and wraiths, so what I've learned and what I've found is that oftentimes you're going to want to actually shoot the ground directly in front of you instead of trying to get that airburst or even going for the direct. This will deal damage to both you and your opponent, but if done correctly, you should create a heck of a lot of space between yourself and them. This can swing engagements back in your favor, or at least let you disengage without losing your life right away. Just be careful not to blow yourself up on accident. Speaking of blowing yourself up, Titan is all about doing just that in order to move around maps very quickly. If you've played an arena FPS ever before, you're already familiar with rocket jumping. For the uninitiated, if you jump and then fire a rocket at your feet, you're going to boost yourself with great momentum across the map while trading a small amount of health to do so. This is the single most important thing you need to learn if you want to ascend to true understanding and mastery of the character. With practice, you should be comfortable rocket jumping from your spawn to the enemy's objective, or from spawn to spawn even, in just a couple of seconds. Now, there's a few different ways to rocket jump, and they're all useful in different situations. The most basic way is simple. Look straight down, jump, then immediately shoot a rocket at your feet. This will boost you straight up in the air, and help you reach ledges that you might not otherwise be able to reach. Alternatively, if the ledge is low enough, you can jump and then use your ground pound ability to kind of double jump, but I'll talk about that more later on when we actually dive into that ability. Let's get into the fun stuff. If you want to move yourself forward with rocket jumps, you want to go fast with rocket jumps. There's two ways to go about that. The first is comfortably achievable only on keyboard and mouse, and that's spinning, doing a quick 180, then looking down roughly 45 degrees, preferably you do both those things in one swift motion, all while jumping and then shooting at the ground once you have swung your aim all the way behind you. This will send you flying in that opposite direction that you just fired your rocket, and with practice you can do this very, very quickly, and very accurately. With time, you're going to learn the sweet spot distance where you're going to get that full impulse, that full speed boost from your rocket's explosion, while dealing the minimum amount of damage to your character as possible. This minimum damage seems to be 30 damage, and the maximum seems to be 70, so try to aim to do the least possible self-damage with rocket jumps whenever possible. The second method of gaining speed with rocket jumps is much more friendly to controller players while simultaneously having plenty of use for mouse players. With Titan, you can backfire your rockets into either walls or the floor and achieve this exact same thing that we just talked about. For more traditional rocket jumping, what you can do is look up at oh, roughly 45 degrees or so, and then just simply jump and backfire at the same time. You're going to shoot that rocket right behind you, and you're going to backfire it into the ground, and give yourself that same boost that you would get from that super uber duper leaped gamer flick shot one that we just talked about. When you leave your spawn, you can backfire the spawn room door, 
and basically that will let you get a free, super easy rocket jump out of your spawn, which does not cost you any health at all. Even for a mouse player, the super elite uber duper uh, mouse gamers that are used to flinging their mouse behind them and doing those rocket jumps, honestly, if you're in a spawn room that has a really low roof or you're going through a hallway that has a really low roof, it's oftentimes better, in my opinion, to do that backfire rocket jump instead of the super uber duper elite gamer flick shot one because, well, it's just consistent, right? You can point exactly where you want to go. You can get that angle exactly right. You can plan it. You don't have to just flick your mouse and subject yourself to the possibility of making mechanical errors. You just get it right every single time. It's consistent and repeatable, and that is very valuable, I feel. So, it's a, it's a map-dependent thing, it's a spawn-dependent thing, it's a spawn-door-dependent thing within every map, but you should find value from this in certain situations, and I don't think you should write it off. Rocket jumping out of spawn pretty much every single time is often a good idea in Lawbreakers because you have spawn protection for the first couple of seconds after leaving your spawn room for the first time on any given respawn. So don't be afraid of hurting yourself because you're going to heal that health right back almost instantaneously. You're not going to have any lasting negative effects from it and you're going to get free speed while feeling cool. Just do it. If you're really quick, you can fit two rocket jumps in out of any spawn and you will not take any lasting self damage from it. You will heal it all off instantaneously and get a lot of speed. On a lot of maps, you can do those two rocket jumps out of spawn and then bunny hop your way to the middle of the map with zero G and then continue holding your momentum with backfires in that zero G space. Oftentimes, it'll only take you a total of three rockets to cover the map as fast as, if not faster than, Wraiths and Assassins, and you only need three rockets to kill the vast majority of enemies in the game. So, that's your entire magazine right there, and if you don't manage to kill somebody, pulverize them. Use your CRISPR, use whatever else to get that final little bit of damage to kill them off. You can cover ground so fast, you are a shock trooper of insane proportions when playing this character once you learn how to rocket jump effectively. Just make sure to reload your rocket launcher ASAP once you performed all the rocket jumps you're going to do if you know you're not running directly into a fight. Like, for example, contesting B when it's 15 to 15 in Turf War or something like that, then you might not reload. But generally, in a given game, if you're not spamming your way into that base as fast as possible, get your reload in when you can. For example, if you're rocket jumping twice out of spawn and know that you're not running directly into B, hit that reload button instantly after you shoot that second rocket so you can have your rocket launcher totally filled up and ready for your next impending fight. Now obviously that's not going to be the appropriate action 100% of the time, but often enough it's just fine. Anyways guys, the clips presented throughout this video should give some really good examples of the importance of both rocket jumping and backfiring with this character, as well as give a solid idea of how to actually perform the different kinds of rocket jumps in the game. If you feel that you need more help, or even a dedicated guide to just rocket jumping, leave me a comment on the video and if there's enough demand, I'll go ahead and make that happen for you guys. Moving on from rocket jumping, I'm still not done with these rocket launcher tips. This weapon has a lot more depth to it than you might initially realize. Once you've played this character for a good while, you'll realize that your rockets have a maximum range to them. They don't travel forever. Once they reach their max range, which is actually sort of short, the rockets will automatically detonate midair. You can and should use this to your advantage whenever possible because you can deal very high damage to entire groups of enemies that is very surprising, very unexpected, and most players are not going to quite realize how to deal with it quick enough. I'll show a couple of examples of some spaces that you can do this, but it's by no means an all-inclusive list. Spamming hallways and chokes has been a strategy in shooters for years, and Titan takes advantage of it better than most other classes in the game. Let's move on to Titan's secondary weapon, the CRISPR. This weapon is a short to medium range beam firing weapon that fires electricity that arcs between players in close proximity. This beam is very forgiving, as long as your crosshair is at least somewhat close to the target, you will hit them. This gun deals 25 damage per tick, which happens every 0.2 seconds, coming out to 125 damage per second. If you have two enemies that are close together and the electricity bounces from one to the next, the damage to the secondary target is halved and then rounded up. You're going to deal 13 damage per tick every 0.2 seconds to that secondary target if one exists. 
There's no range drop off on this damage. Either you deal the damage or you don't. That's pretty much it. While this doesn't sound like a whole lot of damage on paper, in practice it definitely feels much stronger than what it sounds like. The rate at which you can burn through multiple targets with this gun is absolutely staggering, and when you consider that you can hit multiple people with it all at the same time, you've got one of the best guns in the game and a secondary weapon slot. Generally, I would recommend that you leave your rocket launcher as your primary for most fights and then make quick swaps to this weapon to finish off weak targets pretty consistently. However, if your primary is out of ammo and you don't have time to reload, your CRISPR is more than competent at eating through entire enemy teams, especially pesky wraiths and assassins. I also quite like the CRISPR to pre-fire doors and hallways, especially if I'm on the run with very low HP. It's a great way to get a little bit of extra damage on somebody or to sometimes even kill them if you get really lucky. Your first ability, Pulverize, causes your Titan to leap towards your crosshair, then slam into the ground and deal damage in a small area around your landing point. You're going to deal 125 damage with this attack and also slow anyone affected by it to a small degree. While this can be good for adding damage to a fight, a lot of the time it will result in you getting killed by melees at point blank if you leap straight onto somebody that's already aware of you. Generally, I feel this ability performs best from an offensive perspective when used as a mobility tool and as a repositioning tool in fights as opposed to a straight up damage tool. It could be used to finish off weak players when your rocket launcher is out of ammo or when they're running away and you need something to chase them, but otherwise it's not super fantastic. It's not something that you want to rely on as your main source of damage. You really want to only add it as an adjunct when you really need it. Otherwise, it's great in 0G because it will drop you down to the ground at warp speed. If you're in position too high in the air and a gunslinger or enforcer is threatening you in your 0G space, all you gotta do is press that pulverize button and within one second you're gonna have your face planted firmly on the ground and hopefully you're going to be in a much safer position from those scary scary hit scan classes. If you decide that you really just must use this ability offensively for some reason, I quite like trying to position myself in such a way that I will leap over my opponent and land behind them while still hitting them with the splash damage, and I try to mix it in with my rocket jumping. Combining your abilities in this way makes your movement much more erratic and difficult to track, which can positively impact your survivability. Another niche use of this ability is to give yourself a ghetto double jump. Whenever you're airborne and you activate this ability, your Titan is going to actually jump again in midair, and they're going to get that little bit of extra height before they crash back down to Earth. You can use this to your advantage to climb up ledges without resorting to rocket jumping, and your health total is going to thank you when you start doing that consistently. Let's move on to Titan's second ability, the Neutron Mine. This is, well, a mine that arms nearly instantly upon coming into contact with an object. It lasts forever, has a 10 second cooldown, and you can only have one placed at a time. Once an enemy enters its radius, it's going to detonate and impede movement of all enemies in its area. Many movement abilities of your opponents are going to be severely reduced if not completely ineffectual while they're stuck in this area, so dropping it in a good choke point or on an objective is a sure way to make sure your opponents have a really rough time and that you get very consistent, easy peasy rockets on them. If you hit an enemy directly with this mine when you're throwing it, it activates immediately, so sometimes if you're in an aggressive stance, it makes some sense to cancel your rocket firing animation by throwing your neutron mine immediately after firing a rocket at your opponent. It's not going to impede your ability to detonate that rocket midair, and if you do get a lucky toss and you hit them directly, you're going to stop that person in their tracks, giving you a really, really easy direct hit with your next rocket for 225 damage. Honestly, I can't say that I have a single clip of me ever doing this or that I've ever actually done this on purpose, but it's something that, while writing this guide, I kind of realized should actually be a very powerful tactic once you kind of learn it and get used to it. And it's something that I am looking forward to going back to Titan and trying to figure out and trying to get consistent with, because I do feel that it'll create a really, really nice power spike for my Titan. Like, if I'm getting flanked by some jerk face assassin who's just right clicking me from across the map and pissing me off if i hit them directly with my uh neutron mine oh my god they're done they're dead they lose because i pressed one button so that sounds really really appealing and i really want to try and learn it so hopefully you guys can give it a shot as well let me know what you think if you find that useful or if it sucks who knows 
Let's get back on topic here. Basically, just toss this thing on objectives and choke points when you're first starting out with it and you're first trying to learn it. Remember that enemies can shoot it and destroy it before it detonates if they do see it, so if you're playing against enemies that are making it a point to, well, shoot it, then it's time to get more creative with your positioning. Once you really get a feel for the mine and the throwing arc of it and understand how to use it and when to use it and what the cooldown time is like so you never got to think about it, you're just always throwing it out on cooldown once you see that it's been used. You can start sticking it to teammates to do really weird, funky stuff, and you can start trying to hit enemies directly with it like we just talked about. You can do really weird stuff. You can even, what you can do is, if you see an enemy stuck in your neutron mine, for example, you can wait out the actual active time of that mine, because it's going to be on for about three seconds, and then you can throw a second neutron mine that you have cooled down and ready to go, and you can stick that guy in place for a good six seconds as opposed to three. Three seconds in this game actually goes by very quickly and doesn't feel very long at all, so trapping them for six seconds is almost assuredly a free kill for your team if you're playing heads up with those mines. So it's a couple of different ways you can do it. This is one possible example. I'm sure you will find much more creative uses of it than I can right now, but let's just get the ball rolling here, right? Those are some easy ways to start. Finally, we've got the Titan's key ability, Berserk. Upon activation, you gain 400 health points instantaneously, and your character physically grows much larger in size. You put your guns away, and all of your abilities become unavailable during this ability. What you do gain, though, is essentially a super-powered version of your CRISPR secondary weapon, firing electricity from your fingertips. This deals slightly more damage than your CRISPR, 33 per tick every 0.2 seconds, and half that to any secondary targets that it arcs to. Your range seems to be a bit longer than the CRISPR's normal range, and the ability lasts for 10 seconds total. If you activate this ability while standing directly on the ground, you're gonna be forcibly held in place while you go through this transformation into your enraged berserk state, which will get you killed 100% of the time. So if you're gonna pop this ability, you need to make sure you're airborne when doing so, unless you've got a death wish. Try to just jump before you activate it. It's really all you need to do. Honestly, I feel that in a lot of situations, this key ability is not terribly powerful and isn't necessarily meant to be used to kill people with. It's not meant for you to use to go face first into a key point with all of your teammates behind you and, you know, you push forward with all your health and extra damage. It's really not designed for that because your body grows so much larger and you become... Well, you don't become slower, but you feel slower because you don't have any mobility options available to you that you kind of fail at being the tank that this ability kind of purports you as being. You are not quite as hardy as you might initially think. What I have found to be the best application of this alt is in smaller altercations, when you're in a 1v1 or a 1v2, maybe even a 1v3 if it's some particular classes who don't have very high DPS or they're low on health, they're low on ammo, they're reloading, and you have a moment to actually pop this ability, it will let you mop up, it lets you clean up already weakened teams, already damaged teams, already broken up and not properly working together teams for whatever reason. This will let you work through everyone one at a time in a really, really powerful way, and you will become actually the juggernaut that you're sort of supposed to be, but... If you use this to just storm your way into a base, you're going to find failure more often than not. So I suppose that that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad key ability or anything like that. It's far from it. It's extremely powerful and has a lot of utility in a lot of situations, both when you're just cleaning up teams or if you're running a blitz ball and you just need extra health or something, or, I mean, you're in any situation where you just need 400 health right away. You know, whatever. That's kind of what it's for. It's more of a perception thing. I think the vast majority of players kind of feel that when they pop this, they're supposed to be like just going into the enemy base, they're supposed to be leading the charge and doing big damage while tanking damage. And frankly, that doesn't happen. You don't have enough DPS, you don't have enough health, your body is too easy to shoot at full auto with um, pit scan weapons from far distances, and it's just not good for that role. So once you kind of get that out of your head and you understand the proper way to use this ultimate, the strong way to use this ultimate, suddenly it's actually quite good, but you gotta learn when is the right time. So with all those abilities out of the way, let's talk positioning, decision making, and just wrap up a grab bag of a couple of other random little tiny tips that didn't quite make it in anywhere else in the video. So first off, generally in 0G, you don't want to be letting yourself get too high up in the air. 
Try to stick to mid-height or lower heights because you're going to be eaten alive by enemy hitscan characters if you go super high up in the air. You're going to get focused, you're going to have a bad time. Your job in most cases is going to be to hold down objectives, to hold down B-point, to hold down the satellite, to hold down the blitz ball in the middle of the map, whatever. That's going to be your main goal very often. So you got to let your teammates do the work, you got to let your teammates do their jobs. You're going to hold that interior, that smaller space where you are absolutely dominant with your weapon choices and everything, but you have to let your gunslingers and your enforcers and your harriers and whatever other characters control that open zero g area you need your teammates to have that control over the map because if they don't have control over that then you are not safe controlling the middle of the map like you're supposed to do and suddenly you have to start playing a flanking picking kind of role almost like you're a gunslinger or you're an assassin or wraith you have to start playing really aggressively really awkwardly to try to get picks and create openings for your team to start establishing a foothold back in mid because once they have that then Titan's strengths really shine in that middle game. But if you don't have that teamwork, then you got to play Titan a totally different way. So that's kind of the two major ways I approach it. If I have teams controlling mid, then I control mid. If my team isn't controlling mid, then I don't try to control mid. I have to go elsewhere. So it's a hard thing to learn. It's a hard thing to see. You have to have some faith in your teammates sometimes. But, you know, other times you're just getting mashed up with potatoes that don't have thumbs. And... There's nothing you can do, and you just gotta try to get those picks and just try to style on people, and hopefully that's enough. Moving on, Titan is one of the best objective carriers in the game. Thanks to having access to the huge speed boost of rocket jumps and the instant 400 HP heal of Berserk. Flying out of zero G with backfire, popping your key ability midair, and bunny hopping your way into the goal is an awesome feeling and can be really hard to deal with if the enemy team isn't ready for it or if you've slayed your way through mid right before picking the ball up. They've only got one or two guys on defense, and you've got 800 health. It's really hard for two guys to kill you fast enough. That's a lot of health. This is when you start going into groups of three, four, five people. That's when your 800 health starts to feel like eight health. Next up, peeking corners with Titan is also insanely effective. Since your rate of fire is so low, you don't need to keep exposing your body constantly while firing. You can step out, shoot, and step back into cover very quickly, which combines quite well with spamming hallways like we discussed earlier on. Other than that, just try to go for direct hits at close range whenever reasonable, and especially when you catch somebody off guard. The extra 50 damage from a direct hit is really important and really noticeable in a lot of fights, and if you can get it for just a modicum of patience, that sounds like a really great trade-off to me. Anyways, everyone, that'll just about do it for today's discussion. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you learned something new about Titan. If you've got any other thoughts or strategies that weren't covered here, I encourage you to share those in the comment section down below so we can learn to be the best Titan players that we can be. If you really like the style of content and you want to see more of it, let me know in the comment section down below, and you can consider supporting me over on Patreon as well to help turn this into more of a real job for me. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.